Well, I, I figure before everyone um, has to depart for the evening, if we could have some remarks from curators, the um, lead teaching artists, some of the, I, I, I don't want to say students because you all are master <laughs> artists as well, but those who want to uh, speak, um, I think we should just have some brief remarks if you don't mind. So maybe I'll pass it to Brianna who um, put together the text, um, hung everything, installed it, and um, is kind of the caretaker of the gallery of Miles House. So I'll pass it off. Hello, everybody. Hi. Welcome. Thanks so much for coming. Um, we're really happy to be celebrating the first opening day of Legacy, which shows off the amazing workshop participants and our wonderful instructor, Denise Silva Dennis. Thank you. As Jeremy mentioned, part of the title is the student work from the workshops, but we do know that there's so many amazing artists who have a mutual exchange with each other in these workshops. So students in the sense that you're participants of each of the classes that Denise is hosting, but definitely artists in your own rights and bringing things to the table that we can all also learn from. So thank you so much for sharing your work with us. It's beautiful and we're so happy to show you all off. And I wanna really thank Denise for giving her time and her energy into hosting every week to make sure that the knowledge of some of these really special techniques is passed on and shared and has the opportunity for that mutual exchange to happen. So. Denise, if you wanted to say a little bit about what it means for you to be hosting these spaces and, and bringing all these materials and uh, techniques to light. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Fiona. <laughs> well, this is really a dream come true because, you know, as you all know, with Ma's house, you know, really falling down, literally, and then the work that's been done to resurrect it, so part of the resurrection is the dream to actually be able to share the different knowledge about beadwork and then uh, bringing back some of the, like we say students who were also, I was also a student of, of like Tracy, like she taught me some things in high school <laughs> and still when she comes you know, to some of the classes, she'll have new techniques or everybody might have something in a little bit do something a little bit differently that I had never even heard of before or uh, use some type of material so we really do you know work from each other and a lot of it is about um, just being together and then talking about old stories um, and making those connections because you know after coming through COVID and after coming through just being separated everywhere with everyone it's, it's such a wonderful thing to be able to come together and um, work side by side. Sometimes we have to mask up, but <laughs> that's okay. We've been able to adjust. And so thank you for the opportunity here at Ma's house to actually um, do the workshops and have a, a place for them. And um, I don't know, it's just a joy to be able to make sure that the legacy continues um, of our history and then maybe sometimes studying other native history and being inspired by it, like with the, the bandolier, that really comes from the Cree people. But then we just readjusted it to focus on, you know, aspects of Shinnecock and to share that. And then the same with um, these belts. You often see these belts um, worn um, and they usually just, they have conches, like uh, silver conches or like brass um, round conches. But what we did is do our own um, design and what appeals to everyone and, and telling a story like here we have John telling a story about hunting because he loves hunting. And then we have the little cause of children coming in with their grandparents. So it's not only just, you know, adults all coming in, it's um, grandparents bringing their children in. Um, John, you bought your daughter, your family, your mom, you know, your different family members here as well, so that's great. And then here's uh, Tracy, because she loves dragonflies, so she was able to connect with that. And then Peggy up there, she loves the flowers, so that, that symbolizes what she thought of. And then around the corner, we have the hats, and um, some of the things I've never even done before, but I was like just inspired you know, by the hats and seeing it, other people wearing them in fashion. So I'm like, we can do that at Ma's house. Let's go ahead and, and try it. And it was a challenge you know, for everyone to get the beads just right. Uh, but we worked it out. And as you can see, you know, the beauty 
um, mm -hmm. that has transpired from that. So, um, then we even have um, Hunter. He has one of his pieces up there, his belt, and he just did, he did his own inspiration mm -hmm. of more modern day um, aspects, things that you know mean something to him. It's, it's like a storytelling um, belt, and really everything here is there's a story behind it uh, to be shared. So feel free to. You know, ask. Um, we have Heather's over there with the horses, mm -hmm. and that's all about her. You know, her horse, and she went and looked up different photos of her horse, and she created her own stencil in order to um, add it into the whole design. So, you know, those are just some things that I wanted to say. And um, one thing I did also want to talk about uh, Danielle. She's a kelp farmer, so often her mm -hmm. pieces have the you know the kelp colors or being in the water all the time so it's really reflection it's a it's a reflection and all the pieces are really parts of our soul and our spirit and so proudly um, so happy that we will all gather um, to come together tonight um, and oh right here is Kelly's now she, she Kelly's so busy all the time she hardly <laughs> has time to come but she'll come in and then she did her beadwork so even if you don't have too much time this time here, this time, maybe it's gonna take months and months and months. Maybe people are still working on their pieces. Maybe, you know, don't just put it down and never pick it back up. You know, be inspired, pick it back up. You have all winter. Winter is the best time to do your work. So do your work in the winter. So then come springtime, especially powwow time, you'll be all snazzy out on those powwow. Things. <laughs> and people will say, where did you get that from? And you can probably say, <laughs> Those are the things I think they covered. Thank you, everybody, for coming out today. Thank you. <laughs> 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 we have um, our artists here who would like to talk a little bit about their work. So I would just like to say thank you for having it. Thank you. Because thank you. it's a distress of relief. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to thank you, too because it's a positive environment, <clears throat> and I get to show my creativity, bring to life. I mean, I got great teachers like Tracy, you, Ms. Silver, and I'm honored to be here. And I want to say thank you too, because um, it is therapy for me uh, to do art, and um, coming to your classes helped me just rediscover that, you know, bring my talent back out, because it's been a sleeping giant for a long Thanks. time. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so you have a horse? I had a horse. You had a horse? Yeah, for a long time. And I'm a horse lover, so mm -hmm. I love my horse. Yeah, yeah. incredibly. We had like a, eight years together. So. I want to say, that, that is, tell a secret of my sister. It was my sister. When our father passed and he left us some money, the first thing she wanted to do was buy a horse. <laughs> that was the first thing she did with her money was buy a horse. And she kept that horse because, for many years. And I wanted it before when he was living. Right. He was like, right. that's ridiculous. That's ludicrous. Right. That's what he used to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the first thing she did was buy her horse. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I have to say, too, that this is, Ma's house is a wonderful place that I'm happy to be able to experience. Mm -hmm. Um, every Friday, I'm, I'm, I'm watching the video and some of the classes I didn't do, and I was like, oh, I missed that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to miss nothing. I'm going to come over here on Friday and wait and see cars come. I'm not coming in or having that Friday. But this is, Friday evening is my opportunity to, to be out. I'm, a, I'm a, actually a singer, and so back in Georgia, I was out singing at jam sessions or what have you, so I was out, out. But I have, don't, where do you go out in the I go out to the Miles house and look forward to Miles house. I told Mama, she, my mother's in a nursing home right now, temporarily, and I said, well, wait a minute, Friday's Miles house. Now, you know, by 5 o'clock, I have to shut everything down and be ready to get to Miles house. You know, so I, and I said once, I'm a hush. One time I came late to a class, I forgot about it, and I, I oh my God, I got here like at 7. And I was, I, I said, I don't care, people come late. I was so glad. I didn't get a chance to finish everything, but I was so glad I came because I, I'm exposed to so much. Some of these classes I didn't make and I'm not happy that I didn't make, but <laughs> that's not going forward. Very grateful. Um, I am a child of SNAP and the Shinnecock Nation uh, Cultural Coalition from when I was a child. 
and I feel that this is an extension. Yes. And you are mm. all um, children of that program. Mm. And for me, doing the kind of work that we that I do here is very um, different than the things that I do during the day. So that a whole different part of my brain mm. is engaged. Mm -hmm. And it's fun, and I'm learning about more about you know what's going on in the community, and I'm really grateful. Also, and I have to, I know it's very, I, it's not small, but the light here is amazing, and I have difficulty at my own house mm -hmm. doing this kind of work. Mm -hmm. So the light and the, um, as well as everything that I could possibly need to finish a project is here. Yeah. And if I have difficulty with something, my aunt, <laughs> aunt Denise, can solve the problem. You know, she can, she has ways of, you know, work workarounds because of her depth of knowledge. So I'm happy to be here and I'm glad to be in community with all of you. I was, I was gonna say something. Yes. I am going to speak about Denise. <laughs> who I've had the opportunity to work with for many, many, many years. Mm -hmm. And develop a friendship is based on um, mutual interests, including art. I've had the opportunity to watch Jeremy and Kelly grow up. And, um, and being here at Ma's house has given me opportunity to be with my friends that I've known for a very long time, meet new friends, mm -hmm. um, um, be reintroduced to old friends, okay? <laughs> and, um, but I want to say that Moss House to me is more than art. It's, a, it's history. I think history is really important. I think family history is important. Jeremy inspires me all the time to develop and learn and talk and share family histories because um, you know you lose so many family members early, and so you keep their memories alive by talking about them, looking at their photos, and sharing their photos. And I, I appreciate what he's done for history. I also appreciate what he's doing with literacy, with books. Um, as a librarian, I think that, you know, that you have to hold on to books and papers and um, anything that's a photograph, anything that's written, a document, archives, all those things are important. And I don't think that people value them as much as they should, you know. I value all of that, and I'm a hoarder now. <laughs> and I would like to not be a hoarder, but I also call myself a librarian, so that's how I write that off. But you know, I have photographs, and even looking at this, there's a photograph of my mother in this magazine that I've never seen before. So and she got lots of photos, and I have lots of photos. <laughs> so I think it's important that we all remember that we have to pass along the stories of our family members, good and bad, because they're not always good, and. Um, but you have to be honest about who your family members are, what they did, and if you have pictures and, and articles, and um, like I'm always in Ancestry.com, I'm always finding information about family members. You know, they don't tell me, I go on Ancestry and find it. So I encourage everybody to, to um, continue to collect and share their family's legacies and make sure that they're passed on. I also want to say, Jeremy, thank you for helping Rebecca with the photography and inspired her. And so I appreciate that. <laughs> and, so, and I'm glad to be here all the time. Thank you. Um, coming to Ma's house, it, it brings all of us together when we normally may not have come together in this capacity, sitting and not breaking bread, but breaking artwork together. <laughs> creative, creative. Creative, yes. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. Well, thank you all again for making it out. And thank you to our amazing artists for sharing your work. To Denise for hosting these workshops. And please keep it coming back and tell your friends, encourage others, and show them the wonderful things that you made and show them what's possible. Then you're going to have to expand. <laughs> We're going to have to expand. We yeah. need to stay past eight. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.